Well, hello, Herbalife Nutrition, Chairman's Club member Trey Heron here. Today, I have the privilege of discussing with Dr. Kent Bradley, the new bioengineered food label. So Dr. Kent, great to have you today. Uh, it's great to be here. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to just spend any time with you, Trey. This is wonderful. Well, that feeling's mutual. So first question, let's get right into this. So all right. go over with all the distributors, kind of the history of bioengineered food. Yeah, I know, I know this kind of a interesting word, bioengineered, but when we really think about it, our food supply today has been modified from its origins. Traditionally, there's a traditional breeding technique that has occurred for centuries. You know, uh, the crossbreeding of plants, strawberries, tomatoes, everything that we eat for the most part has been somewhat traditionally modified. What, what has happened is with the advent of science, we've been able to figure out how to engineer the selective uh, uh, protection of plants for the benefit of the crop. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. Through the modification at the seed level, we can selectively create plants that have the ability to uh, grow in more arid conditions where less water is needed. Um, obviously uh, an area of concern or where uh, with the growing concern about pesticides, wouldn't it be great if you could create a plant that would be engineered that would require less pesticide because it's more pest resistant? So uh, bioengineering has been around for decades. And uh, when the science of discovery was uh, focused on uh, the selective use of it in plants and now is pervasive. And that's what bioengineering is. It's, it's the ability to selectively modify a seed to grow a, a plant that has specific benefits. Okay, can you explain in, in a little more detail like the, the actual process of how, you know, GMO, how it's done in the lab? Yeah, so at the seed level, um, what happens is, is that a certain characteristics of that seed can be, a, when it's identified that it has certain attributes or characteristics, Scientifically, you can go in and modify it through genetic um, uh, techniques so that that seed, the new seed that gets developed, uh, has uh, certain characteristics that are favorable or supportive. And this is now pretty much prevalent in over 90% of soybeans, as an example, the vast majority of corn in the United States. Apples, for example, you know, apples that don't brown as quickly, the Arctic apple uh, is, is an example. Um, the red delicious apple has been modified, but not through bioengineering techniques. And that red delicious apple was modified through traditional techniques to have a thicker skin, right? So that it could survive longer uh, on the shelf and be shinier. But the bioengineering is just more of a scientific way of making that, that happen more specifically and more quickly, if you will. Okay. And what could you tell the distributors about the, the new bioengineered label disclosure act, which was passed, which is now why we see that sticker on some of our products and, and lots of products in the supermarket. Yeah, that's, it's true. And it is, it's going to be seen on a lot of different products in, in the supermarket. Um, Congress had a push towards, this is actually several years ago, but had a push towards increasing information to the consumer so they can make informed choices. And so it, it could be anything from may contain soy or may contain peanuts, you know, um, farm fed is, is something you see on, on uh, uh, or wild caught. These are all disclosures meant to just inform the consumer of what may be present in the um, items that they're consuming. And the bioengineered label uh, act uh, required that we, inform the consumer if, if there's any amount. And so this is a key. It's not like in some of our products where they're pr predominantly soy and soy is predominantly bioengineered, that's obvious. But even 1% of, of a product uh, with a emulsifier or small, that's why certain tablets, believe it or not, have the labeling. You're like, what well, a tablet? But it's because uh, certain the small ingredients may, may have been sourced uh, by uh, bioengineered techniques. 
Gotcha. All right, last question here. So what would you say to the distributors to you know help give them confidence that the, that our Herbalife Nutrition products still have the highest quality standards, um, the safety of all the products, and, and give them that confidence to be able to respond to their customers who, who might question the label? Yeah, I, I, I would go back to the very uh, principle by which everything is done at Herbalife Nutrition and what sets us apart in that we have a seed to feed philosophy that involves multiple quality checks to ensure that the ingredients are in the quantity we say they are and that and so that's the potency and that there aren't contaminants there aren't things that aren't supposed to be in that and that process is a difficult process and we we have multiple techniques to do that uh, to ensure the highest quality. That is, to me, so much more critical than, than other things that are being brought up. The other aspect is that there has been no scientific studies that have drawn concerns of, of health, and we would never choose a, a product uh, that would be of a health concern. In fact, it's the exact opposite. This is actually fits with our sustainability philosophy to, to feed a growing population. Um, it also uh, supports our point of view around uh, the highest in quality of the ingredient itself uh, to support health and well-being. Some people, when they see an, a new label put on, they don't know the history that it's now being asked of us. And so they think, did something change? You know, but, but our products are the same. We, we didn't suddenly change the ingredients. It's just the label now is being put on. So our product is the same. Uh, and that's, I think, the biggest assurance. We've, we've been taking these products and seeing right. results for years. <laughs> and we have confidence in the product. And just because now we are, are required to put a label on it, that doesn't change the fact that I've been taking this product and, and doing well with it. Uh, so it, it obviously, it, you know, there hasn't been any change in the actual ingredient or formulation uh, that, that suddenly happened. And, and you know, I can, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, I, I take the products, I, I'm a product of the product, uh, everybody listening is a product of the product. And so that, to me, that's the ultimate testimony, right? That, that uh, but th there, is a, there is an informational disclosure and we have to understand uh, why that is and why we actually think that this is a, an important alignment with our sustainability goals and, and our philosophy around the quality that we bring to the market. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, as a, a distributor, in my perspective, you know, this happens to be a, a, a topic that I know a little bit about and a topic that, that I'm very passionate about because uh, I actually own a few hundred acres of, of farmland in the Mississippi Delta that, that I'll lease out to a farmer who, who farms GMO soybeans and, and corn. And so I've questioned him a lot and, and, and learned a lot about it. And to me, um, too, I think understanding the, the label, and you said it, it's to inform the consumer so that we can make choices. I think sometimes we see those labels and we think, oh, maybe that means that it's bad. And that's not what was meant by that label. It's to inform the consumer. And for me personally, I'm appreciative for that because from my perspective, I, I think this is great that people will, will be able to make those choices and knowing too, hey, the great thing about Herbalife is, is we have choices. You know, we have our non-GMO select shakes now here in North America. So um, there's always choices for everybody. And I think it's important to, you know, for everybody to really, um, you know, understand these things that you went through. So thank you so much for, for taking that time, Dr. Kim. Thank you.